Welcome to this tutorial on creating a double exposure portrait, sometimes called a surreal portrait because it has a really surreal look to it, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this rel relatively normal looking picture of this guy in a Muppet shirt, as funny looking as he is, and we're going to overlay this picture over top of him. So the first step is to uh, decide which picture you want to start with and we're going to start with this picture here and then we're going to copy and paste this picture onto the other picture so i just go to select all and then i go edit copy and you can use the keyboard shortcuts that are listed here as well to make it faster and then we go to our picture that we want to be the final picture and we go edit paste and what it'll do is it'll paste the layer over top of the picture now there's a couple options we can leave it this size if we want but we can also make it smaller so what I'm going to do is go to edit and uh, we'll go to transform scale and this will allow me to shrink down the picture now if I want to keep it to scale, then you can see up here I've got width and height. And right now it's 99.51 and 100, it's pretty close. But if I click this button here, it locks the two together. So it's now decreased it down to the same number. And then when I decrease it, it will shrink down accordingly. So if I want the little metal plate to look smaller, I can do that and place it there where I want it. Okay. Once I'm done, I can either switch to another tool and hit apply, or I can go up here and click on the check mark. So often you forget to apply it, you click on a tool, oh, I got to apply it, and then you can click on that. Okay, now I want to actually do that twice more. So I can recopy it in from the original photo, or if I want to keep it the same size, because I'm going to place it in two other spots, I can simply duplicate the layer. So if I right click on there and just go duplicate layer, it will do that. I can rename it if I want to. And I'm going to duplicate it twice, and then drag it down, and I'm going to place it down here, and I'm going to place it down here. Oops. So let's go. And down there. Now, obviously that looks terrible, so what I have to do is decrease the transparency. So I'm going to decrease it down so I can see kind of both at the same time. I can see the arm and I can see the panel, make it see-through. So it's about 55%, so we'll do that for all of them. Go down to about 55%. and 55%. I can always change it later if I don't like the way it looks. Okay, now it's just simply a matter of erasing this area that I don't want. So I'm gonna try and blend the two in. So this is my eraser here. And I've got three different layers, so I have to be careful to be on the right layer when I'm erasing. My background is locked, so I'm not going to be able to erase that without replacing it with white. So I'm going to leave that. And uh, the best thing I can do here is actually zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in fairly close and use that um, close view to erase. I'm going to go to my eraser. And I'm actually going to pick a uh, fair, well, it's pretty big. I'm going to go a little bigger. But what I want to do is I want to pick one with a soft edge. So soft round, pressure, opacity would be a good one. Any of these would probably work fairly well. 
but I'm going to choose the soft round pressure opacity one. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to start with. You kind of see how big it is because what I want to do is just quickly erase to make sure I click on the right layer. I want to quickly erase all this up here. And then I'll take more care when I get close to the actual face. Okay, and so this soft edge just basically allows me to um, blend it in with the face. It's going to make the edge of it semi-transparent. Now I'm going to choose to actually erase the part over the hair. What little it has left. And we'll leave it like that. It just really helps to zoom in because you can get fairly precise. Now I don't want anything over top of the shirt. So I'll erase that quickly and then just take a little bit more time here. Just erase around the edge, make it look like it's just, I've always wanted to be Iron Man. Well, now you can be. So I'll just go down, make sure I get the rest here. You can see it creates a soft edge. It gradually becomes transparent at the edge there. Now it's a little bit unrealistic looking in a sense. So what I'm going to do actually is shrink down my brush size, make it smaller. And then I'm going to actually erase kind of around the eye. One of them is kind of squinty, must be a criminal. And then around the mouth as well just to kind of give it a little bit more realistic looking to feel to it, but still look like I have a metal head. Yes, you can tell it's me, I get to make fun of myself. So same thing over here. Um, again, I'm gonna increase the size up greatly so I can quickly erase, no, I gotta go to the other layer. So is it this one? Nope, this one. Okay, so there's the end of the arm. End of the arm there. Erase that there. Fairly quick process, but do take your time when you're going along the edge. And then of course go down over here. Takes a little bit to erase. So having that soft edge just allows you, if you do accidentally go onto the arm a little bit, it won't erase all of it, erase all of it, just some of it. And there you have, let's just zoom out here. So I'm going to go back to my zoom tool, minus, there you have Iron Man. Now, a little, well, it looks okay on the edge. It's probably a little bit too close on the arm there, but you get the idea. So I can always undo it and redo it if I'm not super happy with the look of it. So you have a double exposure paragraph. Now you can do things if you want to put a frame around it. We have our uh, layer styles. So I'm going to click OK there to unlock it double click if I double click on the layer here or I can go to layer layer styles I can create a border around the picture so I'll just do a bevel and a boss and a stroke so I'll make the stroke fairly big I'll put it on the inside so I just have a border there and you can see that interestingly it goes over top there so I might have to actually erase that a little bit later on so I've got a border there, and if I want to do an bevel and emboss, I can increase that size. Just do a creative frame there. So I have a bit of a border there. And I can decrease that size down a little bit. 
So there's my final product. Uh, I'm just going to touch it up there a little bit. Uh, go to my eraser and go to layer two just to get that erased. Because what's happened is I put the layer here, the border here, so it goes around the whole picture. But this is over top, so I have to uh, either, I, well, I could drag this down below and it would go underneath, but it would go behind the picture, so that won't work. So I'm just going to erase that little bit there. So there's always ways to fix things. And so there you have a double exposure. So the tools we used, of course, were the copy and paste, select all, edit, copy, edit, paste. And then we used the um, free transform or transform tool. I used transform scale and I locked the width and height so that it would stay proportionally. It wouldn't get distorted too much or at all, in fact. And then the eraser tool and used, I used the, there it is, soft round pressure opacity tool. And that just gives me a, um, some basically some leeway if I go a little bit too far over it won't erase it completely and it'll fade out around the edges. Okay, that is your double exposure picture.